الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has mercy on our parents and that he extends the life of those who remain upon goodness باب بن الوالدين وسرة الأرحام the chapter of being dutiful to your parents and keeping the ties with relatives taken from Riyadh al-Saliheen من كلام سيد المرسلين of Imam al-Nawwi رحمه الله on the authority of Abu Huraira has been reported in Bukhari Muslim the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said إن الله تعالى surely Allah the most high خلق الخلق he created the creation حتى إذا فرغ منهم قامت الرحم when he completed the creation the womb stood and it said the womb said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this happens in a manner that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and the womb says I seek refuge in you from the one who cuts the ties so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says na'am yes amma tarudain are you not happy to the womb that I will connect those who connect you and I will cut those who cut you so then the womb responds back to Allah and it says Bala, of course I am happy with this so then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the womb for laki, this is for you the messenger of Allah وسلم, is talking about something that has happened before the creation of man before the creation from the earliest part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation Shaykh Muhammad rahimahullah is saying here in this we learn the importance of keeping the ties of kinship and the virtues in doing so because what we learn from this narration here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tie those who tie it and he will cut those who cut it. What does that mean? It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring them close to him and he will bless them if they were to do so. But if a person was not to do this, what we find in the narration, which is being dutiful to your parents and keeping the ties of kinship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be cut off from that person. May Allah protect us. And that person then will be cut off from any kind of goodness. Then the Shaykh says, now Shaykh Muhammad is saying something, this is really important. He said this some 20, maybe 30 years ago. He says, if ties of kinship are cut off, one of the benefits of this narration is that facade and corruption and oppression will fill the earth. So you will find everybody then cutting off ties of kinship, everyone then being disrespectful to their parents. And the Shaykh is saying here, هذا الأرف ليس أرفا إسلاميا Even if this becomes customarily known within the place that you live in, which is quite apparent, this is not Islamic at all. Then the Shaykh says, فإن الدول الكافرة You will find, his time he was saying, many of the non-Muslim countries, they cut off the ties of kinship. And they don't know one another. ولا يعرف بعضهم بعضا حَتَّى إِنَّ الْإِنسَانِ To the point that you might have a person who is a young man, he doesn't even know who his father is. <coughs> this is something which is common for us. And the Shaykh is saying this within a Muslim environment as something as it being strange. So what he is saying here some 30 years ago is absolutely correct and still valid until today. He's saying here, if you see this hadith not being knocked upon or just generally this chapter that people are not respecting their parents and they are cutting ties of kinship it will create a great deal of fitna and facade on earth to the point that people will not know one another there will be no respect for one another however in Islam being dutiful to your parents keeping the ties of kinship being good to your neighbor because this is what's come in the previous chapters being a positive member within community, all of this is part of the teachings of Al-Islam. 
And if a person has this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring him close to him and he will be close to the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as we see in this hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said a four time before any of us were created, if you disconnect the ties of kinship and you are not respectful to your parents, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already decreed that he's going to cut people off. And that is apparent for us to see in society. Then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited the following ayah. This is from Surah Muhammad, chapter number 22-23. Abu Huraira then narrates, after he said this, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu sallam said, Ikra'u in shi'tum, recite if you want these ayat. Now in these ayat, Shaykh Muhammad rahimahullah says, that there are a number of sifat and characteristics given to the kuffar, Surah Muhammad, a lot of it talks about the munafiqun, so it's talking about the kuffar, it's talking about those people who say they believe but don't actually believe. And even if there is a believer who is a Muslim, but he is sinful when it comes to being respectful to his parents and keeping the ties of kinship, he still then follows these characteristics. Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. فَهَلْ عَسَيْتُمْ Do you think in تَوَلَّيْتُمْ أَن تُسْتِدُوا فِي الْعَرْدِ وَتُقَدِّ أَرْحَامَكُمْ that you were then led, left to roam the land and spread your corruption and then cut the ties of kinship. Who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking to? He's talking to the kuffar and muafiqun. And nobody can understand from that, well, it's about them, it's not about us. As the shaykh is saying here, these are all characteristics which the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa is mentioning within the context of this. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ula'ika. So now here, these people are left to go on the land. What do they do when they go on the land? Number one, they are free on the land, thinking that it is theirs. Second characteristic, and tufsidu filad, then they spread, they spread fitna, arhamakum, and then they cut the ties of kinship. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next line, For these people, they have the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similar to what we see from the beginning of the hadith, which is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring those close to those people who will obey him in this, as well as other things. And he will bless them. But the la'na of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means that the person will be cut off from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No goodness will come to that person from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah protect us. So these people are the people of fitna. The people are cut in ties of kinship, not being dutiful to the parents. Ula'ika ladina la'anahum Allah. Another characteristic for asammahum. So they are deaf, Sheikh Muhammad is saying here, deaf in the sense that when Hidayah comes to them, they can't understand it. When Hidayah comes to them, they don't want to understand it. But if something of fitna comes to them, they will accept it. Isn't that something we find in society today? And their eyes are blind. Blind literally? No. The Sheikh is saying the same thing here, that when Hidayah comes to them, when signs are shown to them, they will not be able to see it. This is because they are blind. And true blindness is when a person is not able to see the haqq. All of that stems from where? From the fact that they were not keeping the ties of kinship and being dutiful to their parents. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grants us tawfiq and success and that he makes us the best of offspring to the best of parents. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reunites us in his jannah. Wallahu a'lam. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyya Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين